Hi everyone. Today in this video let us discuss about Etodolac. Etodolac is one of the medication that is classified as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. This medication is available as tablets as well as capsules. Etodolac shows anti-inflammatory actions, analgesic actions as well as antipyretic actions. This medication is chemically belonging to the class of pyranocarboxylic acids. It can be used in the treatment of painful conditions as well as few of the musculoskeletal disorders like osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Now let us see what are the precautions that should be considered while using this medication. Etodolac should be carefully combined with uh, another medication aspirin. Aspirin is a one type of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. It can be used to treat the fever as well as it can be used to control the pain and inflammation. At low dose, aspirin can also be used as an antiplatelet agent to reduce cardiovascular complications. However, combining aspirin with etodolac does not show any benefit. Instead, few of the complications may be elevated by using this combination. Few people are sensitive to aspirin and they may get bronchospasm with the even low dose of aspirin. Since aspirin is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, it inhibits the synthesis of prostaglandins. Few of the prostaglandins like PGE2 and PGI2 are responsible for increased clearance of mucus and decreased mucus production. By use of aspirin, these prostaglandins are not synthesized properly leading to increased risk of bronchospasm. In people with asthma, this may be more significant. Therefore, aspirin can induce bronchospasm in people with aspirin sensitivity. Similarly, etodolac can show a cross sensitivity in people who are aspirin sensitive. Therefore, in such people, use of etodolac can produce bronchospasm. Since etodolac is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, just like other anesthetes, this medication is also associated with a few of the cardiovascular complications. So, overuse of this medication can produce cardiovascular thrombotic events and even it can increase the risk of myocardial infarction and stroke. Therefore, etodolac should be used at the lowest dose possible in order to minimize cardiovascular complications. In case of development of symptoms like uh, unexpected fatigue, tiredness, pain and pressure in the heart, then immediately this drug may be discontinued and proper examination should be done to check the cardiovascular function. Etodolac can also increase the hypertension. In the people with pre-existing hypertension, the condition may be worsened with continuous use of etodolac. However, it all depends on how well blood pressure is controlled in the people. Particularly at higher dose of etodolac, it can increase the hypertension and can precipitate the cardiovascular complications. However, etodolac can be used in people with hypertension with close monitoring of their blood pressure and any unexpected raise in the blood pressure should be immediately noted. Etodolac can produce few of the adverse reactions on your skin. It can produce exfoliative dermatitis and rarely it can produce another condition Stevens-Johnson syndrome. It produces skin rashes, body pains, fever and blisters on the skin. It is a fatal condition and in case of development of these symptoms, immediately the use of etodolac should be discontinued. And the effect of etodolac is on the renal system. Use of this medication can produce renal toxicity. Particularly, it can affect the renal perfusion as it is going to affect the few of the prostaglandins that are required for renal perfusion. This is a dose dependent action and when it is used at higher doses, a significant effect on the renal system can be observed. It can also reduce the renal blood flow which may further impair the renal functionality. Therefore, in people with pre-existing kidney disease, etodolac should be carefully used. However, in advanced renal disease, this medication should be avoided as it can significantly reduce the renal function. It is highly recommended that when etodolac is used for longer periods, the renal functionality should be regularly checked. 
Another important aspect of etodelac is the increased risk of bleeding. Since it is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, it can inhibit the platelet aggregation. This may increase the risk of bleeding, particularly it can increase the gastric bleeding. This is more important in people with any pre-existing gastrointestinal disorders. Therefore, in people with duodenal, gastric or peptic ulcers, the risk of bleeding is further increased. In people with few of the inflammatory disorders like ulcerative colitis, again, etodelac should be carefully used as it significantly increases the risk of gastrointestinal bleeding. Use of etodelac can also affect the liver functionality. Even though it is not producing significant hepatotoxicity, but with use of this medication, you may observe elevation of liver enzymes up to 15%. In a rare conditions, it can induce jaundice and hepatitis. However, these are rare and they may be developed due to use of any other medications. However, if you observe any eosinophilia, development of rash, you should discontinue this medication as it may indicate incidence of liver disease. Etorolac can produce anemia. This may be due to excessive fluid retention or due to gastrointestinal bleeding which results in the loss of hemoglobin leading to anemia. Even though not clear, etodelac may also have some effect on erythropoiesis, the generation of red blood cells. Therefore, on long-term treatment with etodelac, hemoglobin level should be regularly checked. In case of development of anemia, you may notice few symptoms like fatigue, pale skin, dizziness, and shortness of breath. You may also have cold sensations in your hands and feet. If such symptoms are observed after use of etodelac for longer periods, you have to check hemoglobin levels to assess the development of anemia. Use of etodelac can increase sodium and water in the body. Due to the elevated levels of sodium and water, it increases the body volume and it also increases the systemic vascular resistance. This can also increase the blood pressure and even it can reduce the response to the diuretics like loop and thiazide diuretics. So these diuretics are not effective in controlling the blood pressure in presence of etodelac due to the inhibition of prostaglandin synthesis. That's why etodelac should be used at lowest dose possible. What are the side effects produced by this medication? Etodelac mainly produces gastrointestinal side effects. It can produce abdominal pain, constipation, dyspepsia and flatulence. In severe cases, it can also produce gastrointestinal bleeding and perforation. With use of this medication, you may also have heartburn and nausea and vomiting. In people with risk factors, it can also increase the gastric ulcers. However, few of the side effects are more serious that may be observed with long-term use of this medication. It can affect your renal functionality that may lead to development of edema. It can also produce anemia due to loss of blood or due to fluid retention. Your liver enzymes may be elevated. Your bleeding time is also increased due to inhibition of platelet aggregation. Few other side effects like headache, skin rashes and itching can also be observed. Now let us see how this medication works. Prostaglandin play an important role in controlling the functions of many of the organs in the body. They maintain the homeostasis and at many of the organs, they produce constitutive actions. That means these prostaglandins are always synthesized in the body to control the functions of few organs. Particularly at the gastrointestinal system, they can control the excessive gastric acid secretion by promoting mucus secretion. Within the blood, they can produce platelet aggregation that arrests the blood loss. So they are responsible for formation of clot and prevent the loss of bleeding. Prostaglandins are pathological and they are induced in presence of inflammation that results in the development of symptoms like pain, fever and swelling. Normally, prostaglandins are synthesized through the COX pathway. This pathway is called cyclooxygenase pathway. COX enzyme is of two types. COX2 is a inducive enzyme which is going to be induced only in presence of inflammation or tissue damage. So in people with any inflammation or tissue damage, COX-2 is activated which is going to convert the arachidonic acid into the prostaglandins. These prostaglandins can produce pain sensation and they can increase the vasodilation leading to swelling 
and they can also modify the thermostat in the body leading to development of fever. Now etodolac is a non-selective COX inhibitor. It can inhibit the both COX-1 as well as COX-2 activity thereby it can reduce the inflammation, swelling and pain. It can also reduce the chemotaxis, the movement of mediators towards the site of inflammation. Even it can reduce pro-inflammatory cytokine activity and neutrophil aggregation. All these collectively produce anti-inflammatory activity. Now let us see what is the dosage of this medication. Etodolac is available as tablet as well as capsules. Even it is available as extended release tablets that reduces cardiovascular as well as gastrointestinal complications. For controlling the pain, it can be used at a dose of 200 to 400 mg given for every 6 to 8 hours. For treating either osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis, it can be given at a dose range of 600 to 1000 mg per day given in divided doses. However, in case of extended release tablets, it can be started at lowest dose such as 400 mg given once daily. The extended release tablet should be taken only once daily as they can produce the release of medication throughout the day. Etodolac can be taken with food to reduce the gastrointestinal complications and reducing abdominal pain and constipation. It should be taken with plenty of water again to minimize these side effects. What is this medication Etodolac? Etodolac is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug which is a and it is a and it belongs to the class of pyranocarboxylic acids. How this medication works? Etodolac is a non-selective COX inhibitor. It inhibits both COX-1 as well as COX-2 enzymes. Thereby, it inhibits the sense of prostaglandins. Due to the decreased levels of prostaglandins, it reduces the pain, fever and inflammation. It also works by inhibiting the release of inflammatory mediators. What is the important side effect of this medication? Gastrointestinal bleeding is one of the important side effects of this medication. So it can produce few side effects like abdominal pain, constipation, dyspepsia and flatulence. What is the important precaution of etodolac? While taking etodolac, the lowest dose should be used as it may increase the risk of cardiovascular complications and it can precipitate the heart failure. Therefore, development of symptoms like unexpected weakness, dizziness, chest pain should be closely monitored. It can also increase the gastrointestinal bleeding when it is used repeatedly at higher doses. So that's all about this medication, Etodolac. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.